Okay, you guys ready? It is 6.30. Okay, I'm going to call this meeting back out of recess. This was the continuation of the county board meeting July 22nd, 2021. It was called to recess because of technical difficulties. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Pass Alacqua. Yes. Paul. Rodriguez. Storr. Straub. Present. Summers. Taylor. Here. Thorsland. Here. Wolken. Ammons. Here. Carter. Here. Cohort. Present. Esri. Here. Cortado. Here. Goss. Here. Harper. Here. Humphrey. Here. King. Here. Lakshin. Here. McGuire. Michaels. Present. Patterson. Here. Okay, we do have a quorum present. Um, and I do have a thought for the day. This is a short one. It's from Jeff, Jeff Greenway. We bind ourselves together in times of strength so that in times of weakness, we do not become unbound. Would you rise for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's noted that Ms. Rodriguez has joined the meeting. That's okay. No, we already called roll. Thank you. All right, would the clerk read the notice of the meeting, please? Notice is hereby given that a regular meeting of the County Board Champaign County, Illinois will resume on July 27, 2021, 6.30 p.m. in the Shields Carter Meeting Room, Brookings Administrative Center, 1776 East Washington Street, Urbana, Illinois, in said county for the purpose of allowing and ordering payments of claims against the county, receiving and acting upon reports of committees and other such matters as may be brought before said meeting, which meeting shall continue in session from day to day until the completion of said business. Okay, thank you. Now we are ready for approval of the agenda. This is the same agenda that we had before, but we do need to approve it tonight again. Mr. Esri? So moved, Esri. Thank you, do I get a second? Mr. Patterson, any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, we're now down to public participation. We do have some folks tonight who would like to speak to the board. The first one is Carrie Vogus. Thank you, everyone. Most of you know me from coming and speaking in a lot of different um, areas regarding the jail. And tonight, I want to come from the public side, mainly because I am a citizen of Champaign County. Um, I work for the jail, and I lead the people, some of them that are sitting behind me tonight. And I know over the next month or two, you guys are going to probably have some proposals or some resolutions that will be coming your way to discuss. Um, and I, I really am asking you guys to have an open mind, um, no matter what party or what side you're on right now. We need to start thinking about what we can do right for the county. I've been with the county for almost 18 years, and we have been fighting and discussing the downtown jail for a very, very long time. Um, I've been receiving letters from inmates at the downtown jail begging me to do something. I recently gave a tour to a few people in here that had not seen the downtown jail yet. And after you left, I took a moment to go over to speak with them. And they asked me, why don't they see us? And I explained that they do see what's going on in here. Sometimes it's bigger than them. Um, but I do have faith in what you guys are trying to do. And I think it's time for us to make it right. I have officers that have finally decided this isn't for them. They no longer want to work in an environment that is unsafe. 
I am currently sitting at the lowest staffing level I have seen in my entire 18 years. It's hard for me as a leader to accept that, thinking that somewhere I'm at fault for this. I know I'm a good leader, but I also know that somewhere I need to do better. And I'm asking you guys to think about that in the next month when the sheriff brings to you resolutions. Um, as I sat here, I came up with my N95 mask on because that's how we live right now. Stage five is currently what you see around the world and around our county. The jail is stage one. We are in complete PPE 100% of the time. And they've been doing this since March of last year. And it's time that we recognize these folks, even though it's our job, it's getting to be very, very difficult. Um, we want to find good people, and we want to keep good people. Good people, I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I come with empathy. And this is a job where we have to empathize. We don't always sympathize because we don't understand, but we want good people that can stay. We want to retain these people. I have learned over time that the amount of training we're doing with new hires constantly, there's no history there. And you have to have a history sometimes in order to build a good foundation. I feel like sometimes I'm going back to square one that I learned on day one with a new person because they have no clue why they're here. Today, I know it's hard to even understand this without being there, but I've talked about the mental health issues we're facing every single day. We agree, and I'm with you, that they don't belong in jail. They belong somewhere else. But unfortunately, some of these folks are committing such, such severe crimes that they are coming to jail. But they're still human beings. And I've had people sit here and say, all I want to do, not necessarily me, but the all I want to do is put them in cages. They're in cages at the downtown jail right now. They are sitting in cells that are flooding. They're sitting in, in areas that are not safe, roaches walking across their areas of food. It's not safe. Those are cages as far as I'm concerned. And it's not good. We need to figure out the best way to put this out to the public if it has to go to a referendum that they understand. Right now, my biggest focus is how can I get this closed as quickly as possible and still make sure we have a, a humane facility for the ones that have to come to jail. Dang, I've never had a time limit before. Um, so I want you to know I'm here. If there's ever a time you guys need to hear or see the jail, I know we're in the midst of this still pandemic and we're seeing changes again, but I want to show you the truth. I want you guys to see what it's really like. And today was one of those reminders for me because right now I'm working the floor. I'm not your captain right now. I'm working the floor because we don't have enough officers to staff this facility. And today I had a young man, 30 seconds a day, I had a young man today who was sitting with his feces in his hands eating it. And I went in with my two lieutenants to take that feces from him because I wasn't gonna allow him to eat that. Did I take a risk of going in there? Was it my bare hands with gloves that took the feces from him? Yes, it was. But this is what we are dealing with every day. So please keep this in mind as we move forward and we ask for resolutions or we ask for help. Thank you. I believe we can make a motion to suspend regular rules and extend time. Is that correct? Okay. I think the chair could do that at her own discretion. Great. Okay. Well, I could talk forever, but no. <laughs> Most of you know me here and thought, no, give her a five-minute time limit. <laughs> um, yes, but please, any time, I'm here to speak and talk. And if you want to come to the jail, please reach out. Yeah. We do have a couple of other speakers tonight, uh, presenters on the jail. So if you want to come up and speak, the next one is Ryan Snyder. First time I've ever spoken in front of the board like this, so bear with me. Um, I am Ryan Snyder, and I am the Lieutenant of Corrections uh, at the Sheriff's Office. I've worked for the county for over 15 years. I started out as a part-time master control operator and worked my way up. Moreover, I am a resident of this county. I was born and raised right here in Urbana. I went to Prairie School, Thomas Paine, Urbana Middle and High Schools, and I currently live in Champaign in District 6. I felt the need to speak up, more so because in my position, I've had more interactions with board members than most of the officers at the jail, at least. 
Um, and this is my first time speaking to the board, although I'm sure some of you might recognize me from tours I've given. Um, we feel we are abandoned employees of the county right now. The issues of the downtown jail are not new. Uh, they have been presented to the board ever since I've been working here. Um, but the proverbial uh, can just get, keeps getting kicked down the road. We have given you the stats for those currently incarcerated in our facilities and have been for at least the past six years that I know of because I'm the one that's been giving them those numbers. I'm the one that gets those numbers pulled together. Um, how many times shall we say the same thing? How many times do we need to give you the same information? How many, time, how many tours of the crumbling infrastructure of the jail do we need to give? How many county employees need to get hurt? And how many lawsuits should, should the county incur before you act? Sometimes the right decision is not the most politically ad advantageous one. Citizens of this county are living in deplorable conditions and you refuse to act. County employees are working in deplorable conditions and you refuse to act. We are doing everything in our power to ensure the best possible facility that we can, but the staff of the sheriff's office and the sheriff can only do so much with the facilities that we have. You must close the downtown jail and make practical plans for housing of the incarcerated individuals that reside there. The pipe dream of just simply releasing these individuals is just that. Due to the facility conditions, due to COVID, due to the tremendous issues of staffing, the jail is currently releasing as many people as we possibly can by law. I just took statistics on reports that we've sent out every day. 97.8% of the currently 227 inmates incarcerated there are for felony offenses, being held due to sentencing to DOC or for county time, holds from other agencies, or remanded to the Illinois Department of Human Services. But I honestly don't want to repeat myself. We've given you numbers. We have shown you the issues. I found a copy of your strategic plan under defining our values, or strategic plan online. Under defining our values, the justice number five, you put manage safe and secure detention facilities. You're failing. Um, part of your goals, goals number two, is to maintain a high quality public facilities. And under strategic initiatives, number uh, number two, address facility operational needs of the sheriff's office and jails. You even uh, started that for a special project which additional revenue and or partners must be identified. You're failing. We need immediate funds to address the mounting sizable issues that have been ignored by the board after board after board. The downtown jail needs to be closed and a viable option for housing and current inmate population needs to be formulated. This is an immediate concern and cannot be accomplished without additional funds. Staffing needs to be addressed with incentives for hiring and competitive wages. This is an immediate concern and cannot be accomplished without additional funds. There needs to be improvement in security for this facility, staff who work there, citizens who reside there, and the protection of the public. This is an immediate concern and cannot be accomplished without additional funds. On July 14th, an individual armed with a diesel truck decided that he was going to attack our facility, one of your county buildings. That individual attempted to kill me by running me over. I took action to stop the threat to me, my fellow officers, and to the residents that were incarcerated in that facility as he was lined up to ram the building. I'm not asking for accolades and I'm not asking for recognition. I swore a duty to protect the public and the residents of the jail. I was simply doing my job. Now I ask you to do yours. We need immediate help. Enough kicking the can. Enough pushing off and ignoring the issue. Protect your employees, protect the residents who are incarcerated. Please do your jobs. Okay. Thank you. Next is um, Micah McMahon. Good evening. My name is Micah McMahon. Um, I am a correctional officer here in Champaign County. I'm also a resident of Champaign County. I, I appear before you to speak about an issue that's incredibly important. These are my views. I've worked for Champaign County now for five and a half years. I'm proud of where I work. 
I've seen many changes over the years, though. I've seen our staff rotate out to other jobs or retire. But what troubles me the most is the state of our downtown jail. I've worked now for two separate sheriffs, and one thing that I've seen, which is similar out of both of them, is their desire to see that jail closed and consolidated with our satellite jail. I've seen them speak numerous times here, uh, both regarding this situation. And I know in November of 2016, a referendum was on the ballot, which potentially would have funded this fix. But due to misinformation or very little advertisement, many of the public did not know why it was imperative for this referendum to be passed. It failed. Since then, we've had multiple staff assaults, a marked increase in our inmate population with inmates facing violent crimes, and many inmates with, who have severe mental health problems. One very important word comes to mind when I think about what has led to this in action. Talk is cheap is a saying that comes to mind, especially when it is the exact same conversation over and over again. Let's fast forward to years of talk and reach October 7th of 2019 facilities meeting. This meeting adjourned with unanimous endorsement to consolidate our two jails. At that time, uh, board member Charles Young was quoted by the News Gazette stating, we got to sell this and get the folks to come out. Well, after this, all I could say is it ended with one word, in action. Our sheriff and jail superintendent has spoken again on numerous uh, occasions, even today. Our, our jail superintendent was just here. And have stated that it's not safe and our facilities are not up to date. Again, this has been met with in action. Multiple officers, friends of mine, have been injured due to attacks at the jail. At our downtown jail, to be specific. Again, this has been met with in action. I have personally witnessed numerous board members walk through our jails, and, have, and they have seen those, the conditions that the inmates and employees of this county have faced. Board Chairman Kyle Patterson was quoted last Sunday in the News Gazette stating he had he has been on several tours and found conditions to be, and I quote, deplorable and inhumane. And this has been met with in action. My fellow correctional officers have worked incredibly hard since this pandemic began to ensure our jail has remained without any major outbreak. This included working directly near several inmates who have tested COVID positive. All of this added on top of our safety issues, but still we've been met with in action. I challenge our board members to stop kicking the can down the road. I challenge you to not only tour a jail, but stay a whole shift alongside one of us. See for yourself the dangers that we face every day. See for yourself the conditions that our residents of Champaign County are forced to live with. Um, today, for instance, I was forced to intervene for the welfare of an inmate. Um, I know uh, my captain just spoke about that earlier, and this inmate was in the process of attempting to eat his own feces, and in that process, while attempting to restrain that uh, individual from doing so, he was able to smear that feces onto my arm. That puts me in danger every day. This has become a normal occurrence lately while dealing with an increasingly dangerous population at our jail. My command has been forced to lately to work on the floor alongside us due to our staffing shortages. This is causing physical and mental fatigue for all of us. We cannot wait for something to happen. I fear that if we wait any longer, a tragedy will occur that cannot be reversed. I accept the dangers of my job. I am proud to serve the people of Champaign County in our state-mandated role of maintaining a jail. I am proud of my accomplishments within the jail as a trainer, an FTO, and a union representative, I represent the people who work here. But I will always be proud of my fellow officers who choose to wear the uniform and badge and choose to enter a dangerous situation regardless of our consequences. We do this because someone has to. We do this because we have a calling to serve. We do this because we believe in action. Thank you. Okay, is there any, I don't have any other um, slips from people. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Okay, I will close public participation.
Now we have communications from the board. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Oh, Tatiana. I just wanted to take this time to uh, thank the constituents of District 11 for uh, voting for me and allowing me to represent uh, the members of District 11. I was proud and honored to be able to serve even for a short period of time. I wanna thank my uh, colleagues for supporting me in this decision as I step away from the board to focus on my health. Um, for anybody that does not know, I am battling multiple sclerosis and have suffered my third relapse. So it is time for me to take the time to focus on that. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the community. Of course, I am a uh, member of the community and so I'll still be here so you'll see me around. I'll still be <laughs> watching the uh, county board and seeing what is going on, but I just wanted to take the time to thank everybody. Thank you. Okay, so now we move on to new business for the evening. These are the items the board is voting on this evening. I will still um, entertain omnibus motions for things to go together if the board would like to do that. I would take a motion for items A and B. So Ms. moved. King, could you read them, please? Item A, adoption of resolution number 20... 2021-210, authorizing purchases not following purchase policy, and item B, adoption of resolution number 2021-211, authorizing payment of claim. Mr. Thorsland? Second. Discussion on these items? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion carries. Can I get a motion for item C and D together? Ms. Michaels, could you read them please? Yes, ma'am. Adoption of resolution number 2021-212 authorizing the cancellations of the appropriate certificate of purchase on a mobile home permanent parcel number 30-058-0227 and adoption of resolution number 2021-213 authorizing the cancellations of the appropriate certificate of purchase on a mobile home, permanent parcel number 11-013-0065. Okay, thank you. Can I get a second, Mr. Goss? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Can I get a motion for item E and F, which go together? Ms. Lakshan? Mr. E Mr. Esri? Quick question. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put those together since the one requires 15 and the other doesn't? I'm not super worried about it, but just pointing I'm, that if out. If you want to separate them, we can separate them. They can stay together as far as I'm concerned. I okay. just kind of... Bringing that up was all. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll need a roll call vote for this, please, and it'll take 15 votes. Matt, will you call the roll? We need a roll call for this one. What are we, what are we voting on? We're, we're doing, um, oh, I'm sorry. We didn't read both of them. I'm sorry. Go ahead and read them. This is for adoption of resolution number 2021-214 authorizing an acceptance agreement between Champaign County and the Illinois State Board of Elections for the Americans with Disabilities Act Federal Grant 2021, and adoption of resolution number 2021-215, approving budget amendment 210041, fund 628 election assist accessibility, increased appropriations 15,000, increased revenue 15,000 from an ADA grant from ISDE. Okay, is there any further discussion on those? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Did we have a second? I thought we did. Did we? Did you second it, Mr. Oh, Esri? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I can second it. That's fine. Okay. Pasolacqua. Yes. Hall. Yes. Rodriguez. 
Store. Yes. Straub. Yes. Summers. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Thorsland. Yes. Vulcan. Ammons. Carter. Yes. Cowart. Yes. Esri. Yes. Hurtado. Yes. Goss. Yes. Harper. Yes. Humphrey. Yes. King. Yes. Lockshin. Yes. Michaels. Yes. Patterson. Yes. Okay, motion carries. All right. Next, um, can I get a motion for items G and H? Ms. Carter. So moved. Adoption resolution number 2021-216, approving budget amendment 21-0040, fund 083, County Highway Department 06 or 60, 060 Highway, increase the appropriation 180,000, increase revenue zero, reason, since the funds were obligated from 2020 PO, but not expended until 2021, we are requesting a budget amendment for 180,000 from reserves to the heavy equipment line from the FY 2021 budget so that we may purchase the equipment we had budgeted for in 2021. Madam Chair, excuse me. It's difficult for Matt to hear, especially with the masks on. So if you're wearing your mask, if you could speak directly into the microphone and enunciate clearly or speak a little louder, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, can you read the second one, Ms. Carter? Adoption of resolution number 2021-217, approving budget amendment 21-00042, fund 083, County Highway Department, 060 Highway, increase appropriations of 110,000, increase revenue 110,000, reason, Champaign County Highway Department will oversee construction and invoice IDOT for the roadway costs associated with the RR crossing upgrade. IDOT will reimburse Champaign County Highway for 100% of the construction costs associated with the RR crossing upgrade. Thank you. Can I get a second? Ms. Cohort? Okay. Any discussion on those two items for highway? Okay, those in favor? Aye. I'm sorry, Aye. these require a roll call a roll in 15. Yeah. Pasolacqua? Yes. Paul? Aye. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Cohort? Yes. Esri? Yes. Hurtado? Yes. Goss. Yes. Harper. Yes. Humphrey. Yes. King. Yes. Lockshin. Yes. Michaels. Yes. Patterson. Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Can the executive get a motion for item I, please? Ms. Furtado. Request approval to release an RFQ for a comprehensive workforce study. Can I get a second? Ms. Straub? Second. Thank you. Discussion on this item? Ms. Furtado? I, I think that this is something that we definitely need to do. Um, we've heard from several uh, folks in the Sheriff's Office, and we have some memos here about um, how we underfund and don't pay um, our folks on that side of the operations enough. Um, but since I've been on the county, retention has been a major issue. Um, there's some years where we lose across the board a fifth of our employees. We have major compression issues in salary um, um, with long-term employees not being paid correctly to scale. We have massive problems right now 
in that rival, I think the sheriff in um, the coroner's office was staffing. Um, this is, we need to do this. Um, we also have heard about issues um, in including climate at the county. And I think not just salary, but that climate is sometimes some of the things that drive this. So I wholeheartedly support this. I think we need to get this RFQ on the street and um, come up with a comprehensive plan to address these issues. Any other discussion? Thank you for your comments. We've been kind of mentioning various workforce issues for a very long time, so I'm glad we're going to finally be able to do this. Um, this will, I will ask for 15 votes on this on a roll call because when we do it, I'm going to put it in the budget for whatever we need to spend for the rest of this year and the next year. So I probably will not need to come back for a budget amendment this year, but it will be in the budget for next year by the time we need to pay for it. Would you call the roll, please? Pass Alacqua. Yes. Paul. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Store. Yes. Straub. Yes. Summers. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Thorsland. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Carter. Yes. Cohort. Yes. Esri. Yes. Portado. Yes. Goss. Yes. Harper. Yes. Humphrey. Yes. King. Yes. Lakshan. Yes. Michaels. Yes. Patterson. Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, we can consider all of the appointments together, J through Q, or we can take them individually or pull somebody out. Mr. Esri, do you have a? I'll, I'll make an omnibus motion to okay. approve those. You said I through Q, correct? Okay, do you want to go ahead and read sure. them all? <laughs> sure. Item J. Adoption of Resolution Number 2021-218, appointing Douglas Short to the East Lawn Burial Park Association, term ending 6-30-2027. Item K, Adoption of Resolution Number 2021-219, appointing David Short to the East Lawn Burial Park Association, term ending 6-30-2026. Item L, Adoption of Resolution Number 2021-220, appointing Craig Wise to the Prairie View Cemetery Association, term ending 6-30-2027. Item M, Adoption of Resolution Number 2021-221, appointing Dorothy Vera Weiss to the Champaign County Board of Health, term ending 6-30-2024. Item N, Adoption of Resolution Number 2021-222, appointing Steve Newman, Noonan to the Penfield Public Water District, term ending 631 2024. Item 0 0 Adoption of Resolution Number 2021 223, appointing William Goodman to the Champaign County Forest Preserve, term ending 60 2026. Item P Adoption of Resolution Number 2021 224, appointing John Berge to the Board of Review, term ending 531-2023. Item Q, adoption of resolution number 2021-225, appointing Monty Cherry to the Sangman Valley Public Water District, term ending 531-2024. Madam hey, Chair. Can I do a second, please? Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to remove uh, item M from the omnibus motion, please. Okay, we need a second first, please. Mr. Storr. Okay, now there's discussion. You want to take one out? You want to remove which one? Item M. Okay. I want it to be considered separately, please. Okay. Um, is that okay with the person who motioned? At this point, I think we need to take it out. We should have done that before we had a motion, but any objection to taking that one out? Yes. There's objection. Okay, I think we need to vote then whether we're going to take it out. I, we, no, we could. Okay. So um, let me see what we're doing. Right you can always here. move to sever any issue. So it's, that? it's been presented as a whole, and he can move to sever. He would yes, need a second. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So he's moving to sever. We need a second to do that. Second. Mr. Goss has seconded. Okay, discussion on whether we take this one out. Ms. Rodriguez, you were objecting. Do you want to say something? It seems petty. Um, it seems... Be, uh, I think maybe waste more time. So I would move to keep it within the, the unit that we're voting on right now. 
Okay. Um, it seems to be a waste of time. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the mask off temporarily. Um, but yeah, this seems to be a waste of time. Um, I'm okay with going back. To, I don't know if we need to take it off. That's fine. I'll vote the same way. But it seems to be um, uh, pedantic, an exercise, and maybe wasting time. So that, that would be the only reason why I would oppose this. Okay, further discussion on taking it off? All right, I guess we need to vote now on whether we're taking it off. The, the motion has been to take it off, the omnibus motion. So we need to decide on that. Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 In favor of removing it from the omnibus motion? Aye. I guess we're going to need hands. I can't see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Are you, who's voting to take it off of the omnibus motion? Okay. Yeah, I'm a One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ten. We ten takes it off. Um, we need eleven, I believe, for a majority right now. So it stays in the omnibus motion. So now we're voting and having a discussion on the omnibus motion. Any discussion on the omnibus motion to accept all of these appointments? Ms. Furtado. I just, I want to say that I think even though I support Dottie and um, I've known her for a long time and I think that she is a great person to serve on the board, I think we as a body should always be able to deliberate on anybody who comes before us. And if one person wants to deliberate, even if I disagree, I think that that's an important discussion to have. And I don't see why we would try to forestall that. That said, I would be supportive of, of a Dr. Uh, Vera Weiss, but I would be interested to hear why there was a request to sever. Do you want to know? So, do you want so, to discuss so, so why you want to take You're asking off? me, Stephanie, why? Yeah. Do you want to you know, discuss why you want to take her off or why you well, do not want to appoint her? Uh, as most of you know, I can be an ornery old rascal. But, uh, I mean, this woman, I, I respect her. Let's see. She's been an authority on the nursing home issue. That went well. She's been an authority on the jail. That's going really well. And she's been an authority on the health department, which is – cause some economic hardship for a lot of people in this county. So, I mean, if, if she's that sharp, maybe she, be, should, maybe she should be running this place. But uh, that's my objection, folks. Any further discussion on that or other appointees? Okay, I guess we're ready to vote. Um, those in favor of accepting these appointments? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, we're moving on to item R, which is the broadband task force appointments. Um, I left this in the action because we're not sure if we need to actually do a resolution for this or not. Kyle, do you want to speak to this? Did, did we vote on Dr. Beerwise? We voted on everybody. Okay, so the, the vote to sever didn't... The vote to sever did not pass. Okay. Are you sure? Because I thought it was 10 on the first vote. There were 10. And it passed. You have to have a majority. Which is 10, right? Which is 11. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 20 people. You need 11. Right. Um, yeah, uh, the, we have the appointments for the um, community seats the on the uh, broadband task force. Uh, the three people who I currently have who are agreeing to participate are uh, Bradley Yukin, uh, many of you may know is the manager of the Champaign County Farm Bureau, uh, Mike Smelter, who uh, gave us a very informative presentation. Excuse me, Kyle. Could, could you take your mask off? We can't hardly hear you. Sorry, guys. Um, Mike Smelter, who's worked with UC2B, and uh, there's going to be a representative from the Champaign County, or the Housing Authority of Champaign County. Um, I, I anticipate that there may be more people um, 
uh, who are appointed. Uh, I've had some members reach out about uh, specifically somebody who's um, working with or representing a uh, rural school district um, and other you know affected communities. So um, you know it's something that as we're you know developing, we might uh, you know find it necessary to add some more. Okay, so you're just appointing these people. You're not asking for a board resolution. What's that? You're just you're just letting the um, board know. Yeah, it's just a memo because yeah, the the we, we already passed the resolution to form it last month, and it said that I'd appoint the other three. Well, we did we did pass the resolution to form the task force. I had question about whether you need to get people appointed. So. Um, I I mean I think that this process is probably going to work smoother. Um. Mm -hmm. If we have other people who are, you know, we want to add to the task force, um, uh, it seems like a hindrance to, you know, we don't have to wait until the next county board meeting. I mean, um, it doesn't seem like a very controversial topic to where anybody mm -hmm. who I'd appoint wouldn't, you know, with approval of the whole board. But I mean, if, if you want to hold the process up in that way, I mean. I don't think it's holding the process, Kyle. I think the board rules require that people that are in committees of the board be approved by the board. So I'm just asking the question. Can I ask a point of clarification? I believe that the county executive asked for this format the last time that we spoke. Is that incorrect? About appointing particular members to any kind of committee? So the board rules currently state that if a board committee is formed, that the board chair can appoint the committee because it's a committee of the board as a, a task force, a subcommittee, this a special isn't, committee, whatever. This isn't a subcommittee of the board or committee of the board. A task force is a committee of the board. It was appointed by the board. It was formed by the board. It's not a committee. It's a task force. Okay. Well, that's the argument. So I'm just saying I, I believe your board rules require that they be approved by the board. If, you, if the board wants to, at this point in time, say you can appoint additional members without their further approval, I'm fine with that. I just think that's a board decision. If you could just restate who you have appointed, I would jot that down in my notes. Sorry about that. Um, it's also uh, in your packet, page 56. Uh, Brad Yukin, Mike Smeltzer, and a representative from the Housing Authority. So the question on the table at this point in time is whether Kyle should need to come back to the board for approval of further members to this task force, which is a committee of the board. Ms. Fortado. Kyle, point of clarification, you're also intending to appoint somebody from a rural school district. You're just waiting to narrow that down, who that's going to be. Yeah, and I think it would be a really productive if we could add the person to the task force and have them start participating as opposed to having to wait an entire month. Um, to come before the whole county board. Dar Darlene. Yep. Uh huh. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. I, I think Mr. Kyle should. Uh, I know I've talked to him. I've talked to several school superintendents, and uh, basically they've said that they'd be willing to answer questions. Uh, I should get that contact information to Kyle's what I should do, but uh, mm -hmm. I've had any number of superintendents that have different situations, uh, so I'll get that contact information to Kyle because they'd be willing to work whether they're on the committee or not, but they answer questions, I think, so. Mr. Thorson? Uh, I'm in agreement with Kyle. I think that if we're going to, if he's going to add someone from a rural school district, if we don't have a name yet for the housing authority member, that we would be waiting until the county board meeting in August to get started on this. Mm -hmm. And I think we uh, we know that we, we already missed one round of state grant funding. We know that this is something that the board uh, happily is behind and uh, a subject that's going to take some work to do. And I think the sooner we can get to work on it, the better. I, just as myself, as one board member, I don't have a problem with this task force having people folded into it that would be helpful as they're found and not have to run them through the board uh, to get the task force complete so we can then begin 
system works. I'd like to get on this. As okay. a member of the task force, I'd like to get on that. Okay, so the board could agree this evening that we would suspend the rules of the board to allow Kyle to appoint other members as he wishes to this, this task force. Is that agreeable? Darlene, are you? This is why we don't get stuff done. I agree. I, you guys have a board rule. I can read it to you. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, okay, we can do this so or not. So this wasn't this. able to be discussed with Chair Patterson before the meeting, it so was. you could have come to us. It with was, some and kind Chair Patterson and I disagreed. So I'm, I'm going to read so the board rules. So we have to play rules. games as per we're, usual. We're not playing a game here. We're reading the board rules. The board rules have been brought up many times about we have to follow the board rules. So I'm just saying we're trying to follow the directions here. Well, the board has made its direction pretty clear, I think. We're ready to and move I'm, forward. That's right. And I'm asking, so if the board is fine with that, then we suspend the rules and we say the chair can appoint more people to this committee without coming back to the board. I'm fine with that. Can I move to suspend the rules and move forward with appointments to the committee? It seems like Kyle's doing a good job of finding a well-rounded group that represents all areas of the county. So I would move to suspend that rule if that's the, the next point of order. I'll second. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so there's a you seconded it, Ms. King? Okay, so any other discussion on that? Yes, I have discussion on that. Okay. Um, this seems, again, to be um, a waste of time. Um, mm -hmm. Kyle is not outside of the rules here. This went through our caucus before. Um, we are okay with this package. Everyone here is okay with this package. Um, this seems to be a, a reversal um, for the sake of making a point. I think the movement to say suspending the rules is trying to indicate that we are somehow subverting the regular order, and that is completely incorrect. Um, and I resent it. That's what I would like to add. Okay. I mean, I guess I'd just like to say that this is not a body that is making any formal decisions, um, taking any formal action. Uh, it'll be, you know, making, I assume it will be recommendations or options or recommendations to the county board. Um, just like the uh, redistricting group that you know, was put together by the presiding officer of the county board and submitted recommendations to the county board, did not receive any approval by the county board for the members or even to be formed. Okay. Darlene. Yeah. Mr. I call, I call the question. Well, I'm just trying to find where it's talking there's, in there's your no board question. rules, but there is a board rule that requires that committees of the board be appointed by the board chair with the advice and consent of the board, just like We've every already other appointment. We had a motion and seconded it. Are we, we supposed to have a vote? Yes, we are. I understand. And I'm fine with that if you want to suspend it. All right. So those in favor of suspending the rule and allowing board chair to appoint other people to this committee without Aye. approval of the board. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you. We can move on.